The more we let ourselves off the hook, the more we give ourselves permission, the more we find something that we actually look forward to doing during that break, you will find that you're more intentional, right? Your day is way more intentional. You're way more productive. You're going to get things done. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Take Back Your Biz Summit where I'm chatting with industry influencers on how they have found more freedom, joy, and growth in their business by taking back what matters to them. I'm your host, Lauren Black, creative strategist and owner of Bosscation, a business retreat in a box to help entrepreneurs get away from your daily distractions to strategically plan and grow your business. So I'm so excited for the Take Back Your Biz Summit challenge and massive giveaway. So if you haven't already signed up, make sure you do that at takebackyourbiz.com. So today we'll be chatting with Stacy Speaker. So hi, Stacy. Hey, Lauren. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm so excited to talk with you. I just met Stacy recently, and we I was recorded on her podcast, and um, we just really hit it off. She has a lot of wisdom to share. So mm -hmm. Stacy comes from a 20-year corporate America Tinseltown background of working in the toy industry, and she decided one day that she really felt like she needed a shift and wanted to bring kind of kindness and leadership into corporate America. So she went back to school and now is a communications expert and owner of Stacy Speaker Coaching. And so she helps businesses and employees of kind of all levels with their communication and so that they, you know, leaders can develop better relationships with their employees and, you know, people can recognize conflict and just develop that communication in their businesses. So I think that is so important. Um, communication is key and, mm -hmm. you know, that's definitely foundational for any business owner or employee even. <laughs> or human. Yeah, yeah, or you're human, right, right? You're right. Human, yeah. human beings too. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh <-huh. laughs> anyway, I'm really excited for Stacey's talk today because she is working, you know, talking about something that I know hits home for me because I'm really bad at taking this back. So, I'm going to work on it, but Stacey will be sharing on how to take back your weeknights. So, first, I'd love to know just a little bit of why you think this is important. You know, why shouldn't we be workaholics and work all night every night? Well, I, I mean, we should, right? Because we're robots and that's right. the way we should be all the time, right? <laughs> um, I think it's important to, I don't think there's true life balance, right? I don't think you can, you know, work a perfect hour, eight hours, right? And then turn that off and then come home and be a wife or a hus uh, be a wife to your husband or your boyfriend or your kids, right? So it's, we got to give ourselves a break because somewhere along the line, somebody's gonna be disappointed. And it's yeah. usually us, right? It's usually yes. us. The husband doesn't really get disappointed. The kids don't really get disappointed. We're the ones that get disappointed because we feel like we can't do everything all the time. Oh, for right? sure, self-imposed pressure. I know, you know, I do that to myself all the time. Yes, and if we're working all the time, we're really no good to anybody because we're in such this work mode of, I got to get it done. I got to get it done. I got to get it done. And there's no time for you to breathe. And when, in my personal experience, when I don't have time to breathe, I get really upset. I get really frustrated. I'm pissed at the world because nobody's helping me. Right. Yeah. But it's because I'm doing it all by myself because I feel like I can, I have to, that's, that's the way the world works now. I can do it all. And I, I don't think that's true. Not at the end of the day. No, that just leads to burnout, which I have gone through. Yes. Oh, burnout. Yeah. And you can burn out like, you could have like a mini burnout. Yeah. Right? Like you could be burned out, like you're feeling good today. And then next week, something happens, you're like, oh, here I am again. Right? It doesn't have to be this long, 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 long term thing and then burnout. You can burn out a lot quickly. Yeah. And. and yeah. <laughs> oh, and then yeah. you want to start over and, with a new business like right. I ended up doing and right. you right. know, which isn't always a bad thing because I think I'm on a better path for me. But um, yes. you know, there were definitely things that could have been put into my business to avoid that burnout and you know, then I could still be doing the design, which is what I went to school for, what I loved for so long. Right. And it, you know, begs the question, are we burning out because we really don't like it and we're forcing something, right? Like square peg round a hole. Or is it that we put all this extra pressure on ourselves to have to be perfect and have to get it right and have to 
you know, make the million dollars a year job, right? If you're, if you're on, that's the misnomer. That's what I'm learning every day. If you're your own boss, you actually have to do more work, right? To run your business than you do if you're an employee at a company or you're working for somebody else. Yeah. Well, I found in one of my, my first job out of college, I was an executive assistant to a very high level CEO. And I definitely put a lot of pressure on myself to be perfect in that job until one day I realized that I was miserable every day. And so I made a change. I was like, you know what? I'm still going to work hard, but I'm not going to let it run my life. No, and no, yeah. you can't. You can't because at the end of the day, who, whose life are you ruining yours? Yeah. Right. He doesn't. I mean, yes, you could say from an, because I've had the experience of being an assistant too, you know, he could say, oh, you're ruining my life by not being at my beck and call every 24 seven, right? 24 seven, 24 seven. But in the end, you're the one that's really doing a disservice to yourself and there's no balance. And then there's that whole conversation about boundaries, right? Yes. Setting the boundaries early, setting them mm -hmm. and sticking with the boundaries because the moment, let's say you don't take a lunch right? You don't take a lunch and you do that for six months. And now you decide you're going to take a lunch. You've set this ex expectation of I'm going to be around at lunch. Yeah. So they're upset or discombobulated when you leave. Mm -hmm. and, you, and you're thinking, I just need to go eat, like give me a half an hour. Yeah. But because this boundary that you didn't set up yeah. and now all of a sudden you're instituting these boundaries, people are like, whoa, wait, whoa hold on. Mm -hmm. Right. And that goes into the frustration and okay, now I'm working all the time and now I'm burning out because you're not giving yourself, you're not taking back, right. Taking yeah. back <laughs> something for yourself and it just perpetuates and it's ugly. Yeah. It's ugly. It's well, ugly. I think, I think we talked about the lunch thing on my podcast interview with you. Because, we did. <laughs> yeah. I, when I was working there, I never took a lunch break. And then finally I, you know, my husband would be stopping by for lunch one day. And so I'm like, I'm going to take a lunch break and I'll put the receptionist in front, you know, in charge of the phone. And then 15 minutes in, I get a call from my boss frantic need to come back to the office. What were you thinking? Why are you leaving? And you know, I saw someone at my next corporate job doing design. Um, I saw someone else who never took a lunch break and the same thing would happen to him. So I made sure to, in that job, take my lunch break for the full hour every day and you know, not just work yes. through lunch. I could have, I could have worked through lunch, but you know, yes. I set that boundary. Yes, absolutely. Right. And that's the funny thing too, is that if you have a work ethic, right? If you care about your job, if you care about your boss, you have this drive to put yourself, mm -hmm. right? I, I'm, I want to be good. I want to look good. I want to do a good job. And, and all that does is cause you stress and anxiety. And then you get into the why me's, why am I always right. working? Nobody else works. I don't understand. Yeah. Right? <laughs> it's yep, this exactly. loop. It's a loop. It's mm -hmm. really hard to get off of this hamster yes. wheel that we put ourselves in. Yes. So what are some ways that we can proactively take this back or for those who are maybe starting fresh somewhere, you know, mm -hmm. put this in place before they fall down that rabbit hole? Well, one of my favorite things is calendar. Use the calendar, right? Schedule yourself. Literally, if it's not on the calendar, it's not going to get done. So if you're just starting your own business or if you've been doing it for a really long time, or you're working for a company, right? It doesn't matter. You're in the work world, right? Mm -hmm schedule yourself, schedule yourself even down to meditation, right? I'm going to meditate in the morning from seven to seven fifteen, And then I'm going to commute from seven thirty to eight 45. Cause if you live in California, that makes sense to you, <laughs> right? Maybe nine o'clock. So then, you know, schedule the meetings. And if you have a boss that you're responsible for their schedule, or you have a team, make sure that the schedules integrate so it, it makes sense, right? So they know where you are and you know where they are and give yourself an hour for lunch or maybe it's a half an hour, right? Maybe it's a half an hour lunch and half an hour to read. Yeah. Right. Or, and then end your day, end your day. I am done every day at six o'clock, right? Or whatever time it is. Now I hear everybody out there saying six o'clock. Oh my God, that's really early. What are you talking about? Six o'clock. I still have a thousand things to do. Yep. <laughs> well, you can stop at six, have your family time or your personal time, whatever it is that kind of re-energizes you. And if you feel compelled to go back at nine o'clock or 10 o'clock at night and get a handle on stuff, that's okay. 
it's okay. It's not that you have to stop at six o'clock and then not do anything, right? Give yourself breaks during the day. Take back your weeknights, right? Like we were talking about if you have kids, right? And you're, you're at work all day and your kid has a football game or football practice or, or whatever it is. And you go, you're driving and you find yourself sitting there waiting for your child to be done. Instead of working, maybe you can calendar yourself for that half an hour to listen to the radio or your favorite podcast, right? Or talk to a friend or read a book or sleep. How's that? <laughs> How's that? Like catch a quick little cat nap, you know, for 20 minutes or so. But I really truly, to go back to your question, it's about calendaring and giving yourself permission to do what you need to do when you need to do it so you can be the best in whatever it is that you're doing. I think that would have really helped me with like a sit off, <laughs> sit back before my burnout because I you know, am a very structured person and I like my schedule, but I didn't have one. And mm -hmm. so I would find myself, you know, working till eight or nine and then going to make dinner instead of, you know, pausing, making dinner and then going back if I needed to, or, you know, having a set work time. Cause I think if you do limit your time and you say, okay, I have to get this all done by 6 PM today or 7 PM, then you work a little more efficiently and, you know, can accomplish a little bit more during that time. Yes, yes. And to go with the calendar, I don't know, have you heard of the Pomodoro timer? Yes, but you can explain it in case people have it. Okay, okay. So basically what it is, is it, it started off as it's a timer and you can find the app is everywhere. It, it doesn't matter what kind of phone you have, just type in Pomodoro, P-O-M-O-D-O-R-O, -O -O, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's a 25 minute or a 30 minute timer. And literally what you can do is take your cell phone turn it on and set yourself for a 25 minute window. And I promise you will become so intentional in those 25 minutes that you will get more done during your day than you would if you didn't use it. And I'm a big advocate of it because it keeps you intentional. You can make it hear the ticking, like you can hear the ticking, right? And then it rings this bell and then you can take a short break. Literally, you can set the break for five minutes or 10 minutes or 15 mm -hmm. minutes. Get up, walk around, go grab a cup of coffee, talk to a friend, whatever it is. But that, I would say, couples with the schedule, right? The calendar. Yep. Yeah, that, I think it's an awesome tool. Awesome. One of my favorite ways, instead of the Pomodoro, to me, I personally feel like it's not enough time at one block and then too many little breaks so yeah. i work better when i can focus a little longer so what i do is i'll have um four different time blocks that i set and i pick out ahead of time what i'm going to work on so i've got an hour a half hour project a 15 minute and a five and if i i set my timer you know for one hour for my bigger project and if i finish early then i'll go to my five minute list and i'll start crossing things off and wow. start taking care of those or it's like when i you know if i finish early then it's like oh well now i can go check my email instead of checking it at all times i wait until i'm done with my task and then check email until my timer goes off and then after those four you know time blocks then i take a break yeah and for 15 minutes you know give myself a burning break super impressive lauren super Thank impressive you. like oh my god that's amazing right yeah. that's amazing and i what i love is that we have our own style, right? Yes. We each have our own style. And I think the trap that we fall into is that, you know, we look to these people that are, you know, the gurus in, in whatever area it is that we could look to. And they give us their tips, right? I wake up at four, like Richard Branson, I wake up at 4 a.m. every morning and I do yoga on the beach. I'm totally making this up, right? <laughs> I tried to do that. I can't get up at four in the morning. That's not mm -hmm. my thing. And instead of making myself feel bad because I couldn't do it, I just was, okay, this isn't for me. So I'm going to do my yoga on the beach at three in the afternoon because that's when I find I really need it. And I love mm -hmm. that you and I just had this, the exact same outcome, right, is to be productive right. yep. and get your day done. But our systems are different, which is beautiful because you learned your way, I learned my way. And there's not a right or a wrong way. It's your way. Yeah. Right. It's your way, which is brilliant. <laughs> yeah. You, so it's just all that works. works. Right. And it, it took me a lot of different testings to figure out, you know, yes. what works for yeah. me. 
And sometimes, you know, I'll, depending on my mood, a lot of times I break from that. And I just want three hours straight of don't mess with me. I'm going to turn off my Wi-Fi yep. and turn off my phone and not, you know, pay attention to anything but this one task that I know is yep. going to take me a few hours and I can really focus. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I, I love that because it goes back to giving yourself permission, right? Give yourself permission. It's okay to take a break. It's okay to put your head down for three hours and not talk to me, right? It, it, it's okay to get up and, and take a walk outside. It's okay to do that. And the more we let ourselves off the hook, the more we give ourselves permission, the more we find something that we actually look forward to doing during that break, you will find that you're more intentional, right? Your day is way more intentional. You're way more productive. You're going to get things done as opposed to making yourself feel guilty or bad that, oh my God, like it, it, I can't even, like I'm getting all choked up about it because I don't want people to be stressed, yeah. right? We're already stressed. Life is hard enough as it is. Mm -hmm. But if you can give yourself permission, start with you other people will start to be able to give themselves permission. And now you're actually working in a fun environment instead of this intense, crazy, got to get it done. I got to work through lunch life. Yeah. Well, I have recently been getting better about that, that, you know, my sister lives on my street. And so my two little nephews that they're both under three years old, um, you know, they'll come over on a walk or I'll be on a walk and stop by her house and play with my nephews. And, you know, originally if it were, you know, if she's coming by at five and I still had an hour of work to do, I would be, you know, tense and frustrated and stressed of like, how am I going to get my work done? And now I'm like, you know what? it's okay. I will pick back up at eight if I need to, or, you know, spend a little bit less of a lunch break tomorrow to make up for the fact that I can give myself that permission to hang out with family. During yeah. That time. Right. And I mean, at the end of the day, people are super important, right? Our relationships, yes. you know, you want your nephews to know who you are, right? And you want to spend time with your sister and you want to be able to connect with people. Cause at the end of the day, at the end of the day, if we don't have each other, as human beings, if we don't get to connect with one another, what's the point, right? Like, what's the point? I could schedule myself till, you know, Christmas 2018, but if I don't have time in there to be with my husband or be with my friends or get to meet people like you, what's a, what am I doing, right? Like, yeah. And if you're miserable in business, <laughs> it's going to reflect in like everything that you do yes. and in your client work and in your productivity and you know, yes. You're not going to be as efficient if you mm -hmm. are running round the clock. Right. Because I've tried yeah. that. Yes. <laughs> I know from work. experience. <laughs> yes. Yes, it doesn't work. It really doesn't work at, at all. At all. So yeah. now I'm really so interested. That's what I got to say about that. <laughs> yeah. So now I'm really interested in hearing about this deals conversation that you've mentioned. Yes. So the the short the short answer is is that you make a list of things that need to be done and you can do this with your spouse or you can do it with your kids or you can do it with your employees and you make a list of things that need to be done and you go over that list and you make a deal conversation so let's let's take it to the personal level just cuz it's a little easier deal with your husband right let's say there's laundry there's cooking there's dish cleaning right and that needs to be done, right? This stuff needs to be done. So what you can do is make a deal. I'll make a deal with you. For the month of November, I will take on doing the laundry and cleaning the dishes, right? And he could say, well, I, you know, I would rather do the laundry. And you, okay, well, you'll do the laundry then, and then I'll take on X, whatever uh, other, I'll cook, right? But I don't want to cook five days a week. I want to cook two days a week. And, you know, so it's this conversation. It comes down to having a conversation with somebody. You make a list, you sit down, and you can start off by saying, if I had it all my way, if I had it all my way, Lauren, I would <laughs> want to do nothing. But obviously, that's not, that's not it, right? Life has to happen. So you, make, you, you, you write it down. If I had it all my way, I would always do the cooking on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I would always pick up the kids from after school because I want to spend time with them. And I would always take us to breakfast on Sunday morning. That, that's what I would love to do always. 
And the husband might come back and say, okay, but I want to do breakfasts on Sundays. So if I had it all my way, this is the way it would look. And then you start to dissect it and you can break it up into different buckets. And you can transfer that into an employee environment too, right? I'm the boss. And if I had it all my way, I would really love to just write copy, research uh, new clients, and then do client outreach. And the employee would do whatever the employee is really good at. The employee is really good at social media, right? So they would take on the social media. And it could work for a little while. And then maybe six months in, four months in, it doesn't work. So you have that conversation again. Something is kind of off. Maybe you find that you really do like to do the social media outreach. So you have the conversation with your employee and say, okay, I would really like to take on the social media part because I feel like this is a way that we can broaden our customer base, right? And the employee could be like, okay, I, can I help you with that? How can I support you in that? You, how you can support me is how about you take the content? You write the content and then we can put the social media together. So it's definitely a system that can bend to whatever it is that you want to do with whoever it is that you're in the conversation with. Does that make sense? I love this idea and it makes perfect sense. I think it's really wise to do because then rather than doing what my conversation with my husband was recently that I'm in launch mode right now, I can't do any meals at all for the next month. So figure it out. Right. <laughs> Instead, it would say, okay, maybe I should, you know, you can make a little deal and I'll, you know, do meals twice a week and it might be something easy like sloppy joe or, you know, taco night, but right. it's right. going to be something that I can handle during this season in my life. Yes. Yes. And here's the trick. Here's the trick. You can't complain then, right? So if, if your husband, if you're going to do sloppy joes, your husband can't complain, right? that it's sloppy joes. That's not fair because you've had the conversation already and you've put a deal into place. But the caveat that you can use when you go into having this conversation is, look, this doesn't have to be forever. You know, let me get through the launch and then I will take back, you know, five nights a week of making dinner. I just need your support and I want to do this through this deals conversation so we both know who's responsible for what. So I don't have to get upset with you because dinner isn't on the table on the night you said you were going to do it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's That's, it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's beautiful. It's genius. I, I need to implement that today. <laughs> yes. Yes. And you know, it might not work like it, you know, give it some time. It's not going to be perfect. You're going to have to figure it out. Another thing too, you can do during this conversation is repeat back. So what I'm hearing you say, Lauren, is that you're going to make sloppy joes on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I can't complain about it. But I would really, you know, instead of maybe Tuesdays and Thursdays, could we just do sloppy joes on Tuesdays and then maybe make your awesome tacos on Thursday, right? So then you're like, oh, yeah, okay, I can totally do that. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, okay, awesome. So, and you'll write it down, write mm -hmm. it down, write it down, write it down, write it down, whether it's with pen or electronic, because then you have a record. Yep. Right. Then you have a record. expert, lady. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 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 So, and it's two. It's two ways. Mm -hmm. Right. It's a two-way street. Communication is not only talking, but it's also listening. Yes. And if you repeat back what it is that you heard, now you have an opportunity to have the discussion together. Mm -hmm. So there isn't hurt feelings later on, or misconceptions later on, or upset later on. Yes, that's very important. Mm -hmm. So, what are some ways that you have kind of taken back your weeknights? Well, I am absolutely scheduling myself. So what I do is my husband gets home around, uh, it varies between 6.30, 7.30, right? So it's just different. So instead of me getting upset that he comes home early, I just, in my head, mentally, okay, he's going to walk in at 7.30. So what I do is I shut, my, I shut my computer down. I turn off email at 6. Then what I do is I go and I do something that makes me really happy. Maybe it's listening to my favorite music or I go outside and walk around with the dog. Something that takes me, transitions me out of work mode and puts me into woman, wife, human being mode. Mm -hmm. Then when he comes home, whatever time it is, if he comes home early, then I'm awesome, right? Because I'm prepared. If he comes home later, awesome, because I have more time for myself. And then we spend time 
during the evening, right? If it's 7.30 or so, we're having dinner, we're talking, we're laughing, we're watching a TV show, maybe we go out, whatever it is. And then what I do is I check in with myself. So if it's like 9.30 and I know that I've got something really big coming up the next day, I'll check in, make sure there aren't any fires that I have to put out, give myself permission, and I tell them, babe, I just need a half an hour so I can check, I, you know, give, give me a half an hour, and then I go and I check it, and then I feel good, and then I can, you know, proceed with the evening. So yeah. I really, I'm very intentional of shutting it down mm -hmm. and then checking in with myself a little bit later. That's how I've learned to take back my weeknights. So I can be with him or be with friends, right? If you're going out to dinner with friends or, or your kids, right? If you have kids that you want to play with. I, I don't have kids, so I have nieces and nephews. <laughs> um, Me too. <laughs> yeah, right? And you want to spend time with people and you want to, taking back your weeknights could be sitting on the couch and just reading a book, right? Or binge watching This Is Us, which is like my favorite show ever. <laughs> right? Or, or making yourself a really beautiful, gorgeous, amazing meal with a glass of wine. Whatever it is, taking back in my mind is putting yourself into something that you love to do. You yes. love it. It's your thing, right? It's your luxury. Yeah. And as you said, like we're kind of a team with our, you know, our spouse and whatnot that, you know, we need to look at kind of what their needs are too. Because for me, my husband's love language is spending quality time together. Mm -hmm. And so I need to, well, I'd be fine working every night yes. and, you know, maybe yeah, I'd probably burn out, but um, yeah, you know, yeah. there, there's, you know, I could work a lot longer, but I know that my husband needs that time with me. And yeah. so I need to cut back and, you know, respect him in that realm and, you know, give him that, those weeknights back. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. And it's, you know, what's, what's so interesting is that if you're running your own business, as you and I are both doing, we love it, right? We really love what it is that we're doing. So it's not so much that I feel like I'm working. It's, mm -hmm. it's that I just want to kind of check in and make sure things are going because I need to nurture this just like I need to nurture everything else. Right. And I love the love languages. That's so good. That's so good because it's a really quick, easy test, right? That you can take. Yeah. And it's something that really can open up a lot of yummy doors between couples. And I think they even have one for office environments. They do. I haven't done it, but I've yeah. heard that it's very good. It's very good. It's absolutely very good. And one of the things that I use with my clients is a communication. I have a communication style assessment and it's the, it talks about four archetypes of who you are as a communicator. So once you start to kind of figure out who you are and how you operate and give yourself permission, this is like a running theme here, <laughs> um, you can really start to take back whatever it is that you feel maybe you've kind of let go of. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. And one thing, so one of our guest experts is uh, Catherine Hofer of Modern Planner. And she didn't talk about this in her chat, but I've heard her mention it before when she was working one-on-one -on -one with me and helping me with my time and my scheduling is she mentioned that, you know, a lot of times you can set your weeknights to not work, but have one like fallback night that your spouse knows that maybe Thursday nights are kind of your catch up night so that if you didn't get everything done you needed to that week, then that's kind of the night that can be dedicated towards that right. work. Right, absolutely. The deals conversation, Yeah. right? Yeah. It's, it's perfect, like, okay, you know, get buy-in, right? Like Thursday nights, great. Or maybe he's like, oh, maybe it could be Tuesdays, right? And you have that conversation because, I mean, you work from home, right? Yes. I work from home too. So it's a whole different, is a whole, we could talk about that forever um, on a whole nother talk about how life is different working from home versus being in an office environment. But to have those conversations with each other and give yourself permission, have him, you know, be okay with it. It's like when I'm getting ready to get on a conference call with one of my clients, I'll check in with him first. Hey, I'm going to be offline for about an hour. Is there anything that you need from me before no, I'm totally good. Awesome. So now I don't have to worry about him. I could just be totally present for my, one of my clients when it comes time to have our coaching call. Yeah. So it all comes down to communication, Lauren, all of it, yep. right? It's you communicate with each other. You talk about your feelings, you talk about your needs, and you can do that in your business and you can do that in your personal life. Yeah. And they often intertwine. 
because uh. you know, when you work from home and <laughs> yeah. you run your own business. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And you know, the, here's the funny thing. It's you, right? You're the, you're the common denominator between your marriage and your work. Yep. Right. So when you're happy, when things are moving, your work is in flow, you know, your marriage is in flow. And then when you get smacked with something, that's a kind word, right? <laughs> when a fire happens, now you've got your resources to go back and be like, okay, I have my calendar. I'm going to stick with my calendar or I'm going to use the deals conversation and be able to have these tools, whatever tool it is that you use, use it and try it and see how it is that it's going to benefit you so you can be who it is that you need to be at that moment in time. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. So I know we need to wrap things up pretty soon. So I will ask you one final question. Okay. If you could give one piece of advice for, you know, action step of what people could do today to take back their business, what would that be? Action step. Gosh. Um, let's see. You could take back your business. I think have fun. Have fun. Look for the fun in it. Right? Go back and why are you doing this? What made you become this particular boss? What chose you to be in this particular business? And go back and look at the fun part of it because we can get so mired down in the stress of it, the hard the hard long nights, the hard long hours, dealing with clients, watching our bank account flux, right? Like one month we're flush, the next month we're not. Go back and look at what is it about it that makes you happy? What is it about that makes it fun? And if you can remember that and kind of <laughs> keep that at the forefront, right? Write it and put it on your wall, right? Like I'm doing this because I wanna bring kindness back into the world, right? Which is my why, that's why I'm doing this. Then I can look at it and remind myself when I'm completely stressed out and freaking out because something's not going the way that I wanted it to do. My advice would be, action step would be, go back and look at what it is about your job and your career and your business that's fun. Yeah, and I think even in your personal life, if you go back and think of what's fun, because if we do become workaholics that work through our weeknights every night, then we can forget what our hobbies are and what we do to relax. You know, for me, if there's a day that I have nothing scheduled, you know, maybe it's a Saturday, I don't know what to do with myself. <laughs> you know? Right, exactly, right? Or you feel like you're wasting time if you're not doing anything. Yes. Yeah. I'm, I'm guilty of that too, that yeah. if I'm not productive, which for me, productive can even mean hanging out with friends or enjoying a book yes. because at least, you know, I'm not just sitting there doing nothing, you know, right. I'm actually be, you know, building relationships or building up knowledge or, you know, enjoying time, downtime. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. We're always learning. If we're not learning and growing, then what are we doing? Right. And I think one of the things too, just to kind of add in is it's okay to fail. It's okay. You have to, you have to fail. I mean, believe me, I have fallen on my face numerous times in my career, both as a, as a business owner and in, when I was back in corporate America, you know, you, you have to, you have to learn, you have to grow. So that means you're going to fail and it's okay. You know, don't beat yourself up for it. Don't, yeah. Don't beat yourself up for it because yeah. it's not worth it in the end. It goes back to give yourself grace, give yourself permission. Grace and permission. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. And joy and sparkle, right? Which are yes. two of my favorite words. Yes, you know? I like that. <laughs> have some sparkle and have some joy. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. All right. Well, Stacey, this was so awesome. Thank you so much for sharing all of your wisdom. Okay. I definitely love that deals conversation and think everybody should implement that somehow, whichever way works for them. Yes, and yes. And I would actually, I, I would love to have that be a giveaway. So oh, I, will, I will do that for you guys um, because I think a deals conversation is a great way. It's a great thought starter and conversation starter for people. Thank you. That'll be really great. And, you know, I think that's wonderful. So where can people find you online? Uh, really easy. StacySpeaker.com. And Stacy is S-T-A-C-I-E. And then Speaker, S is in Sam, B is in Paul, E-A-K-E-R, just like it sounds stacyspeaker.com. And um, if you want to listen to Lauren's podcast, come on over to Reignite Your Light. You can find that on iTunes. And I'm around on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, pretty easy, all under Stacy Speaker. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. This was wonderful. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you.